um, if you're joining us live um, and also those who are watching this recording. Um, thank you for joining Bosler and Joyce Mandel for our first life skills workshop on loneliness when job searching. And um, we will also have some resources in the description in this video. And um, this will also be on our YouTube page um, a few days after this has been recorded. And um, um, thank you again, Joyce, and I will let you begin. Thank you, Natalie, for having me back. I'm thrilled to be back. And um, so my name is Joyce Mandel, and actually um, I live in Fort Lauderdale, but I'm coming to you from Boston. Yay. So I'm in Boston till November 1st and um, actually love the city so much. Okay, so today we're going to talk about loneliness. And um, Ms. Wessler, are you with us? Yes, sure. Okay. Good. Okay. So what I want to ask you first is, are you working at all or are you job searching? I am job searcher. I can't okay. consider myself so. Okay. So you are job searching. Right. Okay. So actually, Wasilla and Natalie and whoever else is listening, um, I did this workshop because during the pandemic, when people were job searching, they got very lonely you know, because you couldn't go out. Um, there was really very little social interaction except with the computer. You were not really, well, maybe with family, but how to wear the mask. And, you know, it, it was, I think it was a tough time. So I think, you know, sometimes people got lonely. So that's why I created the workshop. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you, Ms. Wasella, since you're my participant today, you're so lucky, <laughs> about loneliness. I'm just gonna I'll read it to you. Loneliness is that negative feeling that arises when our social needs are unmet by the quantity and quality of our current social relationships. As social beings, we rely on safe, secure social surroundings to survive and to thrive. When we begin to feel lonely, we experience heightened feelings of vulnerability, which can take a toll on both our bodies and our minds. Loneliness is very common, affecting so many people. For some people, it may be temporary, and for others, it may be long term. Some people can live solitary lives and not feel lonely, while others may lead a rich social life and feel very lonely. Loneliness is not a sign of vulnerability or weakness. And also, it does not occur only in people that are older or physically isolated. You could be in your 20s and at a party and surrounded by friends and still be lonely. OK, so you can have a lot of people around you and you could still feel lonely. OK, so with that, Lucilla, I'm going to ask you a question. OK. And um, so hopefully um, you'll feel OK answering the question. But um, let me ask you something before we start. When you're job searching, Lucilla, do you do it from home or do you go out? Are you with people like tell me how you job search? Uh, Wasilla, you there? I don't know what happened. Wasilla, it seems that, okay, I think she's typing. It seems um, we lost, con I think I have the same problem. Okay, um, all right, so we're talking uh, with the mic. Okay, uh, do you wanna type in? Your answers? Would that be better? Yes. Um, yeah, you, you can um, type in your messages and. I prefer continue hearing. Okay. And, and you just don't want to. So, in other words, you don't want to participate? Chris has the wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, you don't want to, okay, that's, that's no problem. Okay, so I think Chris has arrived. So we have somebody else. Okay, well, still in no problem at all. You could just absolutely listen. If you have a question, just type it in. I think Chris is here. Hi, Chris. Hi there. Hi, am I going to see your face? Uh, soon. Oh, I'm just okay. In. Okay. Well, I saw what still is beautiful face. I saw Natalie's face. So now I'm waiting to see your face. 
Okay. Let's see here. That's on, I think. Let's see. Oh, hi, Chris. Hey, there. Uh, I hear, let me see. Do you hear me? Yep. I, okay, and I hear you. Hi, Chris. I'm Joyce, and um, you just got into the um, the workshop on loneliness. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Yep, perfect is right. And Ms. Wasilla is here, but she doesn't really want to participate. She's just going to listen. So it's going to be me and you. Do you want to participate? Sure. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. So question, are you job searching? Um, a little bit, yes. Okay. Can I ask you what you're looking for? Sure. Um, so mostly either working in a library or a museum, someplace where I get to use my technological skills um, to really help people. Either that or the other thing that I'm thinking about is where I used to work, we, we had a lot of interactions with persons experiencing homelessness. And so I want to um, try and figure out how we can address some of the underlying issues that they're, they're facing. I, I mean, because I feel like, okay. I feel like a lot of the issues are related to um, poverty but a lot of times the fixes are more like putting a Band-Aid on, on something that requires surgery. Um, so so how, how do we, you know, how do we really uh, address the poverty issues is something yeah, that, I, yeah. you know. Well, um, you know, what we're talking about today is, is loneliness. And sure. the reason I asked you that was because when, we, when um, I made up this workshop, I talked to a lot of people during the pandemic and they were very lonely while they were job searching because yeah. they were very isolated. And if you think about homeless people, Chris, right. Same thing, like social interaction. They don't, right. um, they're not engaging. Um, you know, it's, it, mm -hmm. you know, you lose that and you become lonely because the only yes. person that you really see is yourself and how right. much you know, so it's it's loneliness is really out there. And what I would we would what I was telling Wasilla about too in the beginning is you could be at a party. Right. I mean, I could be at a party with all my friends and my husband Michael, right. and I could still be lonely. Yes, that's a true story. Yeah. Or you could be married. I could be married. I, I am married, but I could be <laughs> married to a yeah. <laughs> I am. I'm married to a terrific guy. Okay, but I could be married to Michael. Right have this gorgeous house i don't live in a house right. have these wonderful children we don't have any children and mm. still be lonely okay so loneliness is a really um it, it's well you missed the beginning but really quick lonely it loneliness is that negative feeling that arises when our social needs are unmet by the quantity and quality of our social of our current social relationships as social beings we rely on safe secure social surroundings to survive and to thrive when we begin to feel lonely we experience heightened feelings of vulnerability which can take a toll on both our bodies and our minds so you talk about homeless people oh my god right. it's mm -hmm. like it's like the prescription for that you know what i mean what? i i do I, I think like one of the one of my life goals um as someone that has sometimes uh felt unseen or unheard is to to do what i can do to make people that we know aren't historically they're not being acknowledged people don't want to see poverty no no um because it makes them feel bad uh even though they're not necessarily they're not responsible for it directly right. Right. um and and so i think that that's something that's something that we we as a society can can do is just acknowledging people right uh, well, and just right and just engaging with them and just interacting with them and just making right. them feel less lonely but let me right. ask you some questions okay sure. so um and if i get too personal just say joy said i want to answer all right okay okay so Okay, so I'm gonna ask you, it's called the loneliness quiz, which is, I'm just gonna do a couple of questions with you. Sure. Okay, so Chris, how often do you feel unhappy doing so many things alone? 
Never, rarely, sometimes, often. Um, I'd say sometimes. Okay. How often do you feel you have nobody to talk to? Never, rarely, sometimes, often. Um, probably sometimes. Okay. How often do you feel you cannot tolerate tolerate being so alone? Never, rarely, sometimes, often. I'd say probably rarely. Okay. Okay. Um, and two more. How often do you feel you're unable to reach out and communicate with those around you? Probably never with you. Never, rarely, sometimes, often. Um, I'd say, yeah, rare, rarely, I, I probably would, I would, I would probably go with that. Okay. And how often do you feel it is difficult for you to make friends? Um, never, rarely, sometimes, or often. Um, I'd say often. Okay. And how often do you feel shut out and excluded by others? Um, probably, uh, probably often. <laughs> Okay. How often do you feel shut out? Okay. And, and why is that? Why do you think that is? Well, uh, I think like, you know, people are busy. So, okay. but, but it's hard to remember that when you're like searching for connection or what have you. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, and, and so I try and remind myself like, Hey, I reached out to this person and they didn't get back to me right away. Like they must have something going on. Um, you know, I struggle with uh, PTSD, and so sometimes it's sometimes it's it's hard. And plus, I'm I'm I lean towards the introverted side of things. Like I I I'm, I prefer quality of friendship um, rather over than quantity. rather 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 than quantity. Yeah, exactly. But, but you know something, um, Chris, when you when you're looking for a job, right. You know, it is lonely because you're sending out emails, you're right. leaving voicemails, you're, right. you're you're trying to network, and when people don't get back to you, you're thinking, you know, they can't all be that busy. How are they like, you know, you know, actually when um I was looking for a job, I was a special ed teacher uh, mm -hmm. in Miami when I first um, moved to Miami. And then after 10 years, I didn't want to be a special ed teacher anymore. And I left. And I left a job at that time, paying good money, just got my master's. So got an increase also. And everybody told me that you'll never get another job. Who's going to hire you? You're a special ed teacher. Forget it. You'll never get a job. But my point is, I was so lonely because, first of all, I didn't have an internet. Okay, sure. that's how old I am. And there's there so and and my husband Michael went to work at six o'clock in the morning and didn't come home till seven. Thank God one of us worked and didn't come home till seven o'clock at night. So it's not that he didn't care about me. Of course, called me during the day. How you? But who wanted to talk to him? I wanted the phone to ring through somebody to hire me. <laughs> you know, and yeah, you feel lonely. And and I had nobody really to to reach out to. My parents were in New Jersey. Michael was working. My friends were all teachers. So it's lonely, yeah. you know, and, and I felt, and I, and I, you know, I, I felt that, you know, d definitely. All that, right. That makes sense. Yeah. It makes, yeah. But when, right. But when you're 25 years old, you, you don't want to feel lonely, you know, you want to feel right. like you can get out there and do anything you want to do. And nobody right. was calling me back. So right. I know how that feels. You know, I used to pick up the phone to see if there was a dial tone. <laughs> Half the time I said, oh, maybe my phone is dead. No, it was always working. <laughs> it was. But I just want to say one thing. Well, Silver, if you have any comments that you want to do, just chat them in. Okay? You know, I don't want you to feel that you're not part of this. Okay. So I have some tips for coping with loneliness. Okay? And Chris, sure. stop me at any time if you want to, you know, talk about it. Sure. Okay. Understand that you don't have to be in a relationship to be happy. It may be difficult to see your friends going off and dating people or being with people, but you don't have to date or feel like you're part of a group or surrounded by people that care about you. Date only when you're you're ready. So in other words, what I, I was telling Natalie, I did this for, a, um, for the Boston Public Library uh, Tuesday, and, and I said to them, I would rather be alone than be with somebody and be lonely being with that person. Does that make sense? Perfect. You, yeah, yeah, because some, yeah, because sometimes you could be in a great relate in a relationship and you're lonely in the relationship. So what good is that? 
Right. You, know? you got it. You're, you're searching for a connection with, with someone and, and someone that I think we are all looking to, to feel want it and validate it and, and seen and, and heard and all of those things. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. And when you're not, you're lonely because you're exactly. not getting it. You know, exactly. you know, that's, that, yeah, it's true. Okay. Okay. Realize that loneliness can be a right time to try out something new, relax or nurture your creativity. So if you're feeling lonely and maybe you're going after a certain job and maybe it's not working out, maybe it has a great time to, you know, to try to do something different, you know, or be creative or, or to go into a different direction. Um, for those with religious beliefs, consider fellowship with those of your faith. Most churches should have some sort of regular fellowship. If your church doesn't, consider starting one. And that's a great way to combat loneliness too, to, you know, to join some type of religious um, church, or in my case, a synagogue, where you would meet other people that share the same kind of religion, because then you just, you just meet people. And, and when you meet people and you talk to people, you're not as lonely. You know, you just make, you make that connection. Okay. Um, or um, think of a happy place or a place that you enjoy. And then you're not so lonely. So Chris, since you're my only participant. Sure. <laughs> um, or if Wesela wants to type it in, that would be great. Or if Natalie wants to talk, this would be great too. Think about a happy place where you could go where you wouldn't be that lonely. Hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I I'm, so I, I'm in a kind of unique situation because I'm, I work for a library system now, but I just gave up a full-time position and I'm able to substitute there. And, okay. uh, and that's, that's been helpful for me to get out and, and really get out of my head. Um, and I, of course, like, uh, I like being in nature too. Like, okay. I, I feel like, I feel like you can connect. Sometimes okay. you don't have to be around other people, uh, in order to feel uh, a connection. And so for me, like being out in nature helps me feel um, connected to people. Because uh, sometimes you'll see people like walking by if you're taking a walk or what have you. But even if you don't, like, I, I feel like there's a connection there because uh, nature yeah, yeah. connects us all. Um, right, you know. right, right. So the next time you're feeling lonely, that's a great place to go or, or to close your eyes and think that you're, that you're actually there because it's a happy place for you. Okay. So when I feel lonely, I can close my eyes and I vision myself in Key West because that's like the best place for me. I love it. It's, it's just great. You know, you know, people in Key West, every, every, anything goes, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if you're dressed, you're undressed, you're gay, you're straight or anything like that. It's just, it's just a great place. So if, if you do have feelings of being lonely, you know, and if you can close your eyes and think of that really happy place, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're just not as lonely. And, and also you're going to like this. I know Natalie's going to like this too. Um, reading a book you know, does it make you lonely? Because, right? Because you're, 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 you're reading about different people and it takes you to different places. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, what happened to her? You know, we're you know, reading this great book by um, Linwood Barkley now uh, mm -hmm. that he uh, lost, his wife just walked out, hasn't seen her in six years. All of a sudden there are sightings of her. So I was just reading it before I came on and I'm thinking, and I want to go to the back of the book to see if she's really alive. I'm not doing that though. But, you know, I, I'm thinking, you know, it just makes you think it makes you, it just makes you less lonely because you get involved in, you know, the characters, right? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, also with, um, if you're, okay. 
you could realize that you could be lonely in a crowd. You may have friends, family, and acquaintances, but still feel lonely. For some people, it's difficult to connect with those around them. In this case, um, you know, you may want to try outside counseling. But if you have been in a situation where you've been like at a party or with friends and you know the people, but you still feel lonely. Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. definitely. And, and how do you cope with that? Um, so sometimes I, I'll, I'll actively go and try and seek, uh, you know, someone that I, I feel the most comfortable with and talk to them. Right, right. But, right. you know, I, I tend to err on the side of being a loner for the most part. So I'll, I, I'm, I'm kind of used, I'm kind of used to feeling like just doing my own thing and not really like, uh, and being comfortable with that. Like I used to go to the movies and watch movies by myself. Oh yeah, I do that. I used to do that all the time before COVID. Right. And do you feel comfortable doing that? Yeah. I mean, maybe not now with COVID, but. Right, right. Um, well, you can, wear, you, can, you can wear a mask now and go that's back. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I do when I'm at work too, is just wear a mask. Yeah. Um, no, you're smart. We, yeah. We were just talking about that. Yeah. You are. What about eating out alone? Um, done that before. Uh, don't mind it. Uh, I'm definitely okay with that. Uh, okay. Or, or try this one out going out to like a Starbucks. Well, I live in Fort right. Lauderdale, so it's not cold usually any time of the year, but you could just sit at a table and then all of a sudden you're sharing it with somebody right. and the conversation starts coming on and maybe you went there being lonely, but you're not going to end right. up being lonely because you're chit chatting with somebody that's sharing the table with you. Right. You know, That's a fair point. Yeah. You know, so you can always con connect like that. And and I think, too, um, I was telling Natalie that my husband and I are, you know, in Boston for the past three months. So I've been looking for free things to do. And I found this whole lot of museums. But what's mm -hmm. cool about it is you meet so many people because while we're waiting in line to go into the museum, you're with people. So you right. start talking, where are you from? Oh, Fort Lauderdale, I have friends. Oh my God, what happened with the storm? You start talking about Ian. And and then all of a sudden, even if I went there without my husband, Michael, I don't think I would have been lonely because I would have all the other people to talk to. You know, it's just, sure. it's connecting and it's engaging, you know? Right, right. And Putting yourself out there is important. And yeah, oh, and definitely when you're job searching, it's so important to network like that. It is because, you know what, Chris, you could be on the computer and you could um, you could look at a job, click the mouse, and 600 people could be clicking the same job with the same mouse. You see what I mean? But yeah. if you're out and you're meeting people and you're talking to people, they'll think, oh, wow, you know, I got this guy Chris's number and he was like, really cool. I'm going to give him a call and see me. You know what I mean? Because they've met you. They've seen you. Right. So, yeah, you know, so right away – it's not as lonely, right? I mean, right. It, it, it is, it's so true like that. You know, another a great story is we're, we're, we're living by the seaport now, great area. Yeah. So I walk a lot and there's an actually a, um, like a staircase, I'm mm -hmm. not kidding. It has 20 steps, which is great exercise. So I'm running up the steps all the time. Well, I'm not mm -hmm. I'm holding the thing. <laughs> and go up and then you see the whole seaport. And there are so many people taking pictures and you hear so many different languages that even if I was feeling lonely walking the steps, because Michael's not walking the steps with me so fast, I'm not lonely. And right. and walking down the other day, I saw a guy with a t-shirt with Miami. So I live in Fort Lauderdale. Nice. So I said, oh, do you live in Miami? Oh yeah, I do. I said, okay, where do you live? And oh my God, I live there. And then all of a sudden you start talking. So who knows if I was looking for a job and I said, oh, you know, what do you do here? Who right. knows what the connection could have been? Do you see what sure. I mean? And I then do. You're less, right. And then you're less lonely. Right. You know, so that's that that's the thing, you know, and, and you know, when you're talking about homeless people, oh, this is some. So I, I did a, a workshop in Boston really fast. Sure. So, you know, I'm dressed up, I have, you know. I'm not virtual. Well, you know, I have to wear a dress and kind of look good. Mm -hmm. um, so 
anyway, after I do the workshop, I want to go on Newberry Street with my husband and walk around and, and go, go eat and look at the shops. So I put on my leggings, my sweatshirt, you know, I bring all my stuff, my sneakers, and I change my clothes in the bathroom. So as I'm changing my clothes in the bathroom Tuesday, a woman walks up to me. She says, are you homeless? Oh, no. I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> No, she says, oh, I see that you're changing your clothes. And right. I thought, oh, yeah, because that's probably what they do because they don't have anywhere to change the clothes, right? Right? Yeah, I mean, there's shelters and things like that, but still, it's, you know, it can be a challenge. Right. So if you go to the library, you just go in. You don't have to talk to anybody or sign in. You just go right. into the bathroom and you change the clothes. Right. Or, um, or uh, a quick, uh, a quick uh, bathing which right. ends up being not too quick for right, um, right, everyone right. that's waiting to use the bathroom. For, right, right, right. So, I, so, I just need to go. <laughs> right, right, right. So I'm putting on my leggings and I'm talking to her. You know, I, I felt bad. And I said, no, I just did a workshop and I'm, I'm going to just go out. I didn't want to go out in sandals and a dress. I don't like to walk with my sandals. I like to put on my sneakers. So she right. said, um, well, I really like talking to you. She says, you know, when you're homeless, oh, this is so, this is unbelievable. She says, because when you're homeless, you know, you're very lonely. Is that amazing? And I just finished doing the workshop and I said, oh, you should have come into my workshop. I just did a workshop on loneliness. And she says, well, you're very lucky not to be homeless because if you were homeless, you'd be very lonely. Aww. You know, so I felt bad, you know, I, I really did, you know, so. Anyway, okay, so let me tell you some interesting facts about loneliness. Okay. Listen, okay, loneliness can be felt. Studies show that being lonely can make you feel colder than those around you. It also can, it, it, it can also increase your cholesterol level and your blood pressure. Did you know that? See, that's, that's really amazing. So in I other words, if you're lonely, your blood pressure could go up or your cholesterol level could go up. Some sure. Right. Some studies show that being lonely can even stop your immune system from functioning properly. So that's your health. Oh, right yeah. there. Right. Yes. Yeah. OK. Loneliness can ruin your sleep patterns. Since loneliness puts your body on high alert, it can make you more prone to sleep problems. Insomnia and lack of true rest can be a result of loneliness. So, um, how do you sleep at night? Um, depends. <laughs> okay. Sometimes I sleep sound as a log and other times it's like waking up at some ridiculous hour that I, I, I I'd rather have my eyes closed. Right. Right. Um, right. And then, and then if you don't, if you don't get a good night's sleep, how do you feel during the day? Um, so I, I vacillate, uh, two extremes. I'm either like, grouchy or uh Irritable. or just really goofy yeah oh really yeah <laughs> that must be fun <laughs> it, it is it's a, it, i never know what's going to come out of, of my mouth on those days <laughs> but do you think that I, i'm just making up a, a time because i get up at three sure. o'clock in the morning sometimes sure. too i mean yeah after five o'clock i can't sleep like i because of work i used to get up to go to the gym every morning so it's still sure in me to get up in the morning and go to the gym. But, but when you wake up at like three or four o'clock, do you have any kind of bad feelings or, is, you know? Usually I, I, I mean, usually I can, it's like, like, why am I? Yeah. Sometimes I just, yeah, I, I definitely, you know, when you're, well, when, when you're having problems sleeping, Usually for me, it's I'm thinking about something that I don't want to be thinking about. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, because it can be hard to control the, those ruminating thoughts, if you will. No, oh, they keep going That's around like, and around and around and around. Right. It's what I call the vortex of melancholy. Um, it's like, I don't really, not that there's anything wrong, but I was trying to remind myself, like, when you're feeling angry or sad or grieving or any of that stuff, because um, really, like if you're if you're changing any time that you're you're dealing with change, right? Uh, I think like there's a grieving process that goes with that because you're losing the 
comfort that you are used to. Oh, definitely, um, definitely. And you're, you definitely, you're losing your familiar ground. Right, exactly. And we all love comfort. Like people, people well, aren't I like, hey, hooray, change, let's go. I mean, there are some people um, that probably enjoy change much more than others. Um, that I am not one of those people. Yeah, I'm not one of those people either. <laughs> but you know what? I think you become very lonely then when you're making the yes. change because maybe you don't know as many people or you don't know if it's the right thing to do. And you know, you have all these thoughts going through your mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. that could be very lonely. Right. You want to can try and control the outcome, but you know, and but, that's that's hard because because you can't you can't control the outcome. All you can do is continue to to put the effort in and hope for the best. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. You know, I, I think, um, Chris, what helped me a lot during job searching when I, of course, was unemployed was keeping my routine because I was less lonely. When I would get up in the morning and my, go, my husband would go to work at six and I would get up with him and then take all my stuff to the gym and then I would see my friends that were going to work, but that was okay. You know, I was glad they were going to work. I wasn't envious. I mean, well, a little bit, I would say, oh, God, I was just joining them, you know? <laughs> Maybe you could just take me. I'll shadow you for the day. But, yeah, I kind of felt bad. But these are my friends that I've seen every single day, and at least I got to talk to them. So right. I was less lonely. And then, of course, I came home and I started job searching, and, and that was, you know, some, sometimes that was really hard for me. But, but I always felt that the exercise really helped me. Yeah. Yeah, taking a break and not doing it all the time because it was lonely. And right. yeah. Okay. Loneliness can affect your mental health. As loneliness increases, so does depression. One of the main signs of depression is that you are no longer want to do the things that you enjoy, including spending time with friends. So in other words, if you are lonely, you're just not going to want to do the things that you do that make you happy. Um, and it could be a small part of a bigger problem. And, and then if you feel that way and you just don't want, like if I didn't want to get up in the morning and swim because I was, I just had it, I would really go see somebody because I would know there was something wrong with me. You know, how did I lose the motivation? I lost the motivation because I'm lonely. I'm not engaging with anybody. I'm not social, you know, there's no interaction except with my husband who leaves in the morning at six o'clock and doesn't come home till seven. You know, and really at seven o'clock, he's tired. You know what I mean? I felt bad being. He doesn't want to talk. <laughs> right. And what do I want to talk about? All the people that haven't called me back. You know, <laughs> right. and then you get angry. I said this in Tuesday's thing because he's asking me, oh, you know, did so. And I said, no. I said, but don't you think I would tell you, you know, then I'm starting to get angry. Why are you asking me this? If I had something good to tell you, I, yeah, but I'm yeah. getting angry at the one person that's that's supporting me and right. supporting me and loves me, and it, it's a whole cycle, you know. It and is. it's because I don't feel good about myself, right? You know? Yeah, and I'm lonely, and, and I, exactly. I finally, yeah, and I finally figured that out when I did the workshop. I did after all these years later. I, I honestly did. Okay, so those are some interesting facts about being lonely. And then, these are really good. I did these in Boston. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so seven types of loneliness and why it matters. So I researched all these different types of loneliness. Okay, so it seems to me that there are several types of loneliness. Of course, not everyone experiences loneliness in the situations described. For instance, not everyone, right, not everyone is looking for a romantic partner, whatever. But here are some types of loneliness that might interest you. New situation loneliness. Okay, that's exactly what you're talking about. You move to a new city where you don't know anyone, or you started a new job, or you started at a school full of unfamiliar faces. You're lonely. Okay? So when my parents took me to BU, they dropped me off. They literally dropped me off, okay, with three other roommates, okay, who I knew nothing about, right, except for letters at that time. And then I said, but aren't you going to help me unpack? Oh, no, Joyce, we have friends in Boston. We'd love to see them. Are you kidding? You're going to just leave me? Oh, you'll do great. 
but I don't even know any, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know the roommates. I didn't know the dorm. I didn't know Commonwealth Avenue. I didn't know the T. Oh, you'll learn it. Okay. So I got a stomach ache right away and I was lonely. I was actually homesick. I didn't even think I could make it through. I think my parents didn't do the right thing with that. I brought that up later when I was an adult. And my mother said, yeah, we should have stayed with you, but we wouldn't have seen our friends. <laughs> so who's more important here, mom? You know, you know, she's only like a father. dagger to the heart. Right. <laughs> your father and I made these plans and we were so excited to see that, you know, but I did great. Uh, my roommates were great. Um, and I learned where everything was and I was lonely because it was a new situation, you know, and, and that's when, I don't know if you've ever been to sleepaway camp, but when I went to sleepaway camp, I was so homesick in the beginning because it was new. And once, and when I was lonely and once I made friends and did activities and like my counselor and had crushes on boys, that was great. You see? So it's just that that new situation that you just have to kind of get into. You know what I mean? Has that happened with you? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. I went to college, like I went to college and still on PA, but it was in Erie, and I'm I'm from South Central PA, and of course I was in the military too. So, like basic training and doing that was halfway across the country. So that was long. And, you know trying to get to know people and, but, and, and a stressful, such a stressful environment. As Did you talk to family, was family members involved at all? Um, you- so uh, not, I mean, I wasn't really able to communicate with my family when I was doing basic training um, or, uh, or what's called AIT, which is advanced individual training. It's basically where you learn what, what job you're going to do um, for the military. So I didn't really communicate with them at all during that. But wow. of course, when I was at school, I, I was in contact with them. And did, did that make you feel less lonely when you were in contact with them? Um, a little bit, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, that's, that's tough. Okay, another type of loneliness. I'm different loneliness. You're in a place that's not that's not unfamiliar. We were talking about this in the beginning, but you feel different from other people in a in an important way that makes you feel isolated. Maybe your faith is really important to you and the people around you don't share that or vice versa. Maybe everyone loves doing some outdoor activities, you like indoor activities. It feels hard to connect with others about the things you find important. So this is where you're in a situation where maybe you're in a party and you just like look around and you know the people, but you don't feel connected to them. So you feel lonely. And, and it's, I think that's what you said in the beginning, Chris, is that you would go over to somebody and start chatting with them, you know, and that maybe would, would make you feel less lonely. But but you feel different. And that's that's a type of loneliness, too. You know, it's, it's a what different happened? loneliness. Yeah. Or how about this? You know, this is I thought about this in um, on Tuesday in Boston. Um, how about going out with three people? OK. And you're all good friends and you actually introduced and, you know, you actually introduced the two of the people and we're all, let's say it's it's all women and they have children and you don't have children and all they're talking about are their kids and their, uh, what they're doing with their nannies, you know, and their, uh, whatever they were called, the umpires, whatever that was. And, um, you know, the furniture they're getting and this crib just, oh, let me show you what I do. Yes. And I'm sitting right there and I'm, I'm like excluded. Right. So how long, that was so lonely for me, you know, and I, I remember coming home and crying to my husband, Michael, and he said, well, why would you go out with them? I said, well, because they are my two best friends. And I would think that they wouldn't talk about their kids all night and they would ask me how my job was, I got a new job at that time, or how you were, but no, so you feel lonely. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Right, 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 and and, I, and and that's why I think it's better to go out with one person. So really, that story was 20 years ago, and I still hesitate when two people say to me, do you wanna have lunch? And I think to myself, 
you know, I don't know if I want to do that anymore. And I'll say, you know, I, I really would like to just have lunch with you, Mercedes, and then I'll have lunch with, you know what I mean? You know, because I, that stayed with me. That's really lonely. You know, that's like a different loneliness. Um, it sounds, sounds like uh, it may have triggered like some kind of like traumatic experience or something. Yeah, yeah. It's just the fact that you're excluded. I mean, right. how could somebody exclude you like that if they're your two best friends? Right. And why was I feeling lonely when I shouldn't have been feeling lonely if I'm around people that I adore and love? There's something right. wrong with that relationship with both right. of them, mm -hmm. right? So one yeah. of them I don't talk to anymore. And the other one, I've known her as long as I've known my husband, Michael. And mm -hmm. I just thought about this the, um, in Tuesday's class. I do talk to her. She... Um, at least twice a week in Boston. Um, but you know what, Chris, when that phone rings and I see it's her, sometimes I just don't answer the phone. I don't, I just don't want to talk to her because our relationship and our friendship was terrific when I met her before, right. she, before she had her son and got married. We would walk and talk and go out to dinner. And now I, I have to think about things to say to her. And I think I'm lonely in the friendship. No, that makes sense. Yeah, I, mean, I, I thought about that also. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's all kinds of loneliness. Okay, another type of loneliness. Oh, I love this one. No sweetheart loneliness. Even if you have lots of family and friends, you feel lonely because you don't have the intimate attachment of a romantic partner. Or maybe you have a partner, but you don't feel a deep connection to that person. So I said, like I said in the beginning, it's better to be by yourself and feel good about yourself than be with somebody and be lonely with the person. Okay. So uh -huh. I think, yeah. Yeah. And I don't think, you know, having somebody, I, I, do I think it's important? Absolutely. But I think you have to have the right person and they have to fit your needs because if they don't and you're lonely with them, why are you with them? You might as well be by yourself and feel good. You know, that's what I, do you feel that way too? Um, I think, you know, I think that it's important to find your own validation. Um, internal validation, you know, is more important than external validation. Uh, but I feel like there's, there's, there's a struggle because we all, we all want to feel connected. And I mean, you know, you want to be desired, but I, I agree with you. Like, I think like it can feel like you're wasting your time if you're not emotionally connected, um, with, with someone, uh, that, but you're still with them, uh, that, that can lead to, uh, loneliness and, and, you know, we know that like in relationships, generally speaking, if needs aren't being met, in any relationship, people are more likely to go elsewhere to find whatever is missing. Um, right, and then they have affairs or they, they, yeah, yeah, the people get hurt. Yeah, you're right, right. you're right. You know, and, and you know, I've been married a very long time and you know, you can't, I think in a relationship, you are going to feel lonely at times because my husband, Michael, doesn't have a lot of the same interests I have, you know, and I have different interests that he has, but it's not that, you know, I'm, I'm lonely with him. You know, I, would I like him to maybe have more of an interest in swimming with me in the morning? You know, he used to be a great athlete. And now he doesn't do it that much. You know, so that, yeah. Or when I'm walking in the seaport and he doesn't, you know, he walks a certain amount and then he stops and I don't want to push him. But then I see people walking like with their husbands or their boyfriends and i think oh god michael would love this if you could walk up the steps and see this so that kind of makes me feel lonely you know what i mean but it's not right so okay next one no animal loneliness many people have a deep need to connect with animals if this describes you you're sustained by these relationships in a way that human relationships don't replace so um in other words, if you are lonely and you do have a pet, sometimes that really helps the loneliness, you know, because you have somebody to come home to that will bark and be so glad to see you and not ask you how your day was. <laughs> That's true. And there's also like, uh, 
Who did you make so, today? Right. Well, and sometimes they're actually excited to see you and they show it. <laughs> which is, and they're which so is, happy to see, nice. yeah. And they're licking you all over and they're, so, right. So you, so you know you're coming home to somebody. Right. And that takes away the loneliness, I think, of coming into a house or an apartment where there's nobody there. You know, especially if you like pets. I, I really, I don't, we don't have a dog or cats. But um, yeah, that's, I think, something that people should think about. And so somebody said Tuesday, well, the dog I want is $2,000. And I said, well, you know, that's a lot of money for a dog. You could go to a shelter, right? Right. There are many dogs that are looking for nice homes that would love you and, and, and be so glad that you've taken them in. So she, she kind of thought that was a good idea. So do you have a dog, Chris, or a cat or? No, no pets at this point. Okay. Uh, we, we ha I've had like three dogs in my life. They're, they're all gone now. Oh, yeah. um, but, you know, I'd like to get a pet, but they're, they're so darn expensive. Um, you know, if it's, if it's not, you know, trying to keep them fed and, and take care of them that way, then there's all of the veterinary bills and things along those lines. Besides, yeah. like, it seems like a lot of, like, if you rent a place, there's a lot of places that don't really, they're not pet friendly. Like, or if they, if you can have a pet, then they want to charge you so if much each month. And then you have to have, like, the fact that you have a pet added on to your renter's insurance. So if the pet act damages something, then, you know, they get their money back. Right, 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 right. But but I think that pets could, to, could definitely fill a void with loneliness. You know? I agree. Yeah, right? That they could, there's somebody that loves you unconditionally. You know? Exactly. And, like, and you don't have to talk to them. Oh my God, how great is that? You know? You don't have to do right. <laughs> okay, another type of love. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an introvert, so it's like no. not talking to people. You know what? I would never know from this uh, workshop. You're, you're doing great. Okay, no time for me loneliness. Sometimes you're surrounded by people who seem friendly enough, but they don't want to make the jump from friendly to friends. Maybe they're too busy with their own lives or they have lots of friends already. So while you'd like a deeper connection, they don't seem interested. Or maybe your existing friends have entered <clears throat> a new phase. That means they no longer have time for the things you all used to do. So, you know, it's you just feel lonely because you they don't have time for you. So there's no time for me. That, right. that type of loneliness. So, um, you know, th that happens a lot. Like you meet somebody and you really want to become their friend and then they never really take it to the next level, right. you know? And then you kind of feel, well, you know, I kind of feel bad that they're kind of rejecting me or, you know, that's kind of a lonely feeling. But, you know, interestingly enough, like I tell the story, um, I joined um, a gym in Boston to swim because, you know, mm -hmm. I swim. So I joined the Seaport Hotel and they have an indoor gym. So I get up every morning at five o'clock and uh, my husband, Michael, he's so good. He walks with me. It's about a 15 minute walk in 40 degree weather. Like, you know, I'm used to 80 degree weather. And um, I swim every Sunday with this woman. Her name is Michelle. And she also went to BU. Um, her mother went to BU and her uncle went to BU and her other uncle went to BU. They went to BU. I went to BU. And I and so we just connected. And I said to my husband, Michael, I would love to just go out to coffee with her because we talk every Sunday while I'm getting dressed to, you know, to leave, to walk back to the, my apartment. But I was afraid to approach her because she could have said, you know, um, you know, I have a lot of friends or I don't know. You know, you're afraid of that, like, lonely rejection. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. um Sunday, she said to me, when are you leaving? I said, November 1st. She said, oh, Joyce, I won't see you next Sunday. I said, oh, okay, we'll see each other um, the last Sunday I'm here. She says, well, would you like to go for coffee? <laughs> I was so excited. I said, oh, I would love to go for coffee. And suddenly, my no time for loneliness became, well, I'm not so lonely now. I made a new friend. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes you're, yeah. you're afraid to take that extra step, but sometimes you need to take it. Right. Right. You know, I, I'm thinking about Brene Brown and um, vulnerability and just, you know, putting yourself out there. But, 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 but Chris, if you don't take that shot and you don't try, you'll never know. 
Exactly. So let, let's say she said to me, oh, Joyce, I'd like to, but I'm very busy. You know, okay, you know. Now, I did say to the other two women that I get dressed with, oh, they're the best. And I said, oh, my God, I'm going to miss you guys. I don't know if they're going to miss me as much as I'm going to miss them. But I said, yeah. you know, maybe we could go, for, you know, before, oh, we're very busy. We both work. You see? So that was kind of, I said, oh, okay. So then I didn't want to approach Michelle because I was kind of lonely after that one. You know, they kind of like shot me down. But you know what? You have to try, you yep. know, and you have to put yourself out there. Yeah. Did you right. want to say something? Yeah. I was going to say effort matters and, you know, putting, you got to put yourself out there like you were saying. So I completely agree with you. If you, you the surest way to fail, I guess, is to not try at all. You have so. to try. You have to keep trying. You do. You have to engage and you have to be social and you have to, yeah, because loneliness can get you and it could make you sick and you can have high blood pressure and you can have high cholesterol yeah, all these bad things, and you don't want that. You know what I mean? You're too young. Okay. Um, another, um, oh, my God, look at the time already. Okay, wait a second. Um, another type of loneliness, real fast. Untrustworthy friends loneliness. Sometimes you get in a situation where you begin to doubt whether your friends are truly well-intentional, kind, and helpful. You're friends with people but don't quite trust them. An important element of friendship is the ability to confide and trust. So if that's missing, you may feel lonely. And and I've seen that so much, well, especially with my two friends that I had told you about. But mm -hmm. if you have friends and you really can't trust them, that's loneliness too. So that you need to maybe just kind of move on, you know, um, because an important element of friendship is the ability to trust somebody. Right? Don't you agree with that? Right? And if yeah, you can't the foundation trust, of any relationship is being able to trust them. Trust right? them. And if you don't trust them, it's very lonely. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then you, yeah, it's a very lonely feeling. Okay, there's another uh, type of loneliness quiet presence loneliness. Sometimes you may feel lonely because you miss having someone else's quiet presence. You may have an active social circle at week at work or have plenty of friends and family, but you miss having someone to hang out with at home, whether that would mean living with a roommate, a family member, or a partner, just someone who's fixing a cup of coffee in the next room who's reading on the sofa. So sometimes you're by yourself and you say, oh, this is so great, but then you miss having that person to talk to. You know, so that's a good time to maybe connect and call somebody or email somebody or read a book. Because once you read a book, you're like in another world and you're not lonely anymore. You have all these characters and thinking about it and it just, you know, it kind of just opens, opens it up. So these were seven types of loneliness and I'm, I'm, you know, we're running out of time, but I have, a, I have so much more with this. But I guess um, Chris and Miss Natalie and everybody else that's listening, what I'm trying to say is, you know, everybody experiences loneliness i think it's how you cope with it and how you handle it and i think you know it, it, it's it's engaging it's being social it's trying to meet people it's 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 trying new things it's opening yourself up because you don't want to feel that because feeling that leads to all type of health issues and that's what you really don't want you know, you want to be out there, you want to be healthy, you want, you know, Chris, you want to get out there and look for a job and feel good and sleep at night and, and have a circle of people around you that, that supports you and says, you know what, Chris, you could do it, you know, you right. could do anything you put your mind to, because then you're not lonely. Oh, and then one more thing, um, I think is great, get a journal, start a journal. I forgot to say that in the beginning. I'm serious, I have three journals. <laughs> I do three journals from all parts of my life. And I, I used to write in, well, I don't write, write I, ha I haven't had a journal in like the last 10 years. But before that, I would write it in every single day because you're most more likely to think about what you do if you write it down than if you don't write it down. So if you, if you maybe feel lonely on a Monday, nobody's calling you back, Chris, and, you know, nobody's emailing you, I'll never get a job, all of this, then Tuesday, oh my God, somebody's called me, this looks good, blah, blah, blah. 
you go back to Monday and say, wow, I felt this way, but now today I don't feel as lonely. Do you know what I mean? So you're able right. to kind of see your feelings. So Jeff, I, I mean, I think a journal is great. I do. And I always say to myself, I'm going to start one again because yeah. I think that's important. Yeah. Because you, you, you know, you just re, re, you read it and then you suddenly feel better because maybe how you felt on Monday, you feel a whole lot better on Tuesday, you sure. know? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 so. and another good thing is to get somebody in your life. That's a cheerleader. That's going to support you and love you and say, you could do anything you want to do. You know, and and that could be a friend, a partner, a family member, or anybody. But everybody needs a cheerleader. They do. That that's really how I feel because they need somebody out there that's not. And this person will not make you feel lonely because they will understand that you will do a great job and you will, you know, you'll do a good job. But um, I hope you learned something. <laughs> that's hopeful. Thank you yeah. for your time. Oh, no. And I'm so glad that you joined. And I, I just I really wish you everything wonderful. Right back at you. Yeah, but you will. You will definitely get that job. And uh, yeah, and I see good things for you in the horizon. I'm a clairvoyant, too. I, awesome. I, I, I could tell. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Because look, we spoke for an hour. and We didn't know each we other. We did, yes. Yeah. And we were engaging and you could have said, Joyce, I'm not going to answer any of your questions, which would have made it a little harder. Right. <laughs> still would have, uh, you know, still would have talked. But yeah, but I think, yeah, I, I just think, you know, it's, it's just important to know about loneliness and how it can affect your job search. And you don't want that. You want to no. go in with your job search, not lonely. Do you know what I mean? Sure. And I, I, I just want to say, like, one of the things that, um, that I've tried to do that too is so talking with my mom, like every day we try and start, I'll try and remember to ask her like, what are you grateful for? And so we just do like a, a gratitude thing. Cause that, that reminds both of us that there are things that we're, that we may be missing. Cause when you're lonely uh, and if you're, if you're headed towards depression or you have depression, it can be tough to be grateful. And I, I'm, I'm personally not a big fan of what I, what, you know, toxic positivity. Like, I think that emotions are just emotions and whatever we're feeling is okay. Um, we do have to be careful uh, not to, we have to be mindful of that unhealthy and healthy ways that we, we deal with, um, various emotions like sadness and anger and, and loneliness and things along those lines. And, so trying to and, find that balance. No, and I think that's great because you know what, Chris, every day that you wake up, you have to be grateful because you are seeing another day, you know, and you get that, that gift that you have right. a whole day to start again. You know right. what I mean? And, and yeah, and as long as you feel good, you know, you have to be so grateful for that, you know? So I think that's great that you do that because there's so many things in our life that we have to be grateful for. And not only saying that on Thanksgiving, you know, right. well, I'm thankful, yes. It's all year around, you know? And yeah, that's... We... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go. It, it, no, what were you gonna say? I just think that that that's very true. I think it's easy, you know, when you're when you are feeling lonely or or you know you're you're kind of feel stuck. Uh, it's easy to forget that there are there are good things happening to you because we know psychologically speaking that people rarely remember positive things. They 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 fixate on the negative. Um, to the point where they lose sight of all of these good things. And the thing is that sometimes what seems like a negative uh, or a bad experience could end up have been, a, it could have been a much worse situation. Oh, Sorry, that be toxic. Um, but my point being is you have no way of knowing if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, so just finding finding joy, I guess, where, where you can and, and reminding yourself that, you know, it's important, it's important to find, 
find joy wherever you can because there's a, lot, there's, a, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in this world. And and every single day you have to say to yourself, wow, I'm so lucky, you know, and I'm just so lucky that I have all of this. Yeah, you do. And people definitely lose sight of that, you know, and especially when they're, um, they're lonely and they're job searching and, oh, nobody's going to call me, anything like that. But you know what? You have tomorrow and you have all these other great things that are going for you. So, you, you know what I mean? You just have to think about that. And I think that's great what you do with your mom. Thank you. With that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so lucky to have her. I agree. Yes. Very. She's a good egg. Yeah, yeah. Well, she has a great son. So, you know, the. Two stories. What do they say? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, you know. Yes, but thank, indeed. Thank you, Chris. I'm so glad you came on. And it was I'm glad so I nice was able to join join you. And it was so nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, and I um, wish you everything wonderful. I do, and um, you. You I too. can't believe the holidays are coming. And a happy and a healthy New Year to you. I hope you get a great job and just stay well. Okay. Thank you. You too. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>